Now on KGW News. So really sounding the alarm so that people have a plan heading into the weekend. Health officials want you to plan now for historically high heat headed our way. And your air conditioner may be no match for the triple digits. Anything above 95 degrees, our air conditioning systems are just not designed to keep up with. Plus, gun violence is not just plaguing Portland. It's an outrage has to end. The president's big announcement today to try to stop the shootings. Then later, Olympic talent in Portland, the Thorns players that just made Team USA. Good evening. We start tonight with team coverage of that historic heat wave about to set in. Let's get an update on the forecast first with Chief Meteorologist Matt Safino. Matt. Thanks so much, Laura. We are still looking at unprecedented heat all across the Pacific Northwest. It won't just be Portland. It's going to be region wide except over at the coast. We've got an excessive heat warning up for all the inland areas of Western Oregon and Southwest Washington, all the way down into Northern California and the other areas in the darker red. That's an excessive heat. Watch that'll be converted to a warning as we get closer to said heat wave. Here's what's going to cause it. This big area of high pressure that develops right over us. Now there are several things about this that are unusual that I want to talk about and I will in just a minute. But first the numbers on this uh, three straight days over 100 degrees. We've never seen that in the month of June ever. The record for June is two. The record for Portland is like five. We've had long stretches of 100 degree weather, but usually not until later on in the summer. So we are likely to break our all time record high temperature of 107. We're also likely to break our all time hottest overnight low temperature of 74. I'm forecasting 75 come Monday morning. That's how hot it's going to be overnight. So stifling days and nights, no wind and several all time record highs across the Pacific Northwest will be broken with this historic heat wave that's on the way. Saturday 105 Sunday. We're going to go 109 and then Monday. There's that low of 75 and a high of 107, which would tie the what will by then be our previous all time record high temperature. So why the extreme heat wave? Well, we've got this unusually strong dome of hot air over us, unusually far north, and it's very unusual for June. More common to see that mid to late summer. But even then, this one is fairly epic because it is so strong. Coming up a little bit later, we'll have more on the climate connection to our extreme weather event that we are all about to endure. Laurel. Thank you, Matt and county health officials are urging people to take this weather forecast very seriously. They say now is the time to find out where you can go to stay cool. As Catherine Cook reports, they're worried about people dying because of the heat. I mean, we know that heat kills. There are plenty of examples, uh, recent and historical. Multnomah County Health Officer Dr. Jennifer Vines is sounding the alarm ahead of this weekend's forecasted record-breaking heat. She worries people could die if they're not prepared for it. I don't use that word lightly, but when we look at the forecast that's really solidifying into the triple digits with a high of, I think, 107 on Sunday, last time I checked, that plus not so much cooling in the evening, so not really a break for our bodies to recover from the heat. Starting Friday, the county is planning to open three cooling shelters from 1 to 9 p.m. They're asking people to please make note of them now. They are the Oregon Convention Center in Northeast Portland, Maloma County's Arbor Lodge Shelter on North Lombard, and in Gresham, the Sunrise Center on 189th and East Burnside. Maloma County shelters have a no turnaway policy. They don't want anyone suffering in the heat, including those who haven't been vaccinated. However, they will be checking shelters for proper ventilation, enforcing social distancing and masks will be required. COVID precautions take, take a backseat for these next few days where uh, heat is really the main health threat. In Clark County, COVID is creating a dilemma when it comes to cooling shelters. And a lot of our of the locations that we normally use for cooling centers aren't available. We're trying to get creative and figure out new options and what we can do. Eric Frank with Clark Regional Emergency Services Agency plans to put out a list of cooling shelters soon. In the meantime, they're asking those who can to offer building space to meet the need. But we're really looking for you know our faith-based organizations and businesses that are willing to step up and open their doors and um, and help us out during these these record hot days. And for everyone. Think about your pets and family members, those kids well in advance. And says Dr. Vines, think about your friends and neighbors and do what you can to help them. And if you have a place to stay cool or you can get to a place to be cool, bring someone else with you who may not have an air conditioner, who may not have an easy way to stay cool. It might just save someone's life. Catherine Cook, KGW News.
Even if you have air conditioning, this heat will be tough on it. Our Mike Benner continues our team coverage with advice to ensure your AC is working as efficiently as possible. I am hooking up my refrigerant manifold. So. This week, Sam Merzea of MP Heating and Air Conditioning is spending most of his waking hours going house to house in the Portland metro area. This has been the busiest start to a summer season that I think any of us in the HVAC industry or most construction and trades have experienced. Just how busy is busy? Merzea says he's getting upwards of 200 calls for service a day. It seems like everybody needs something ahead of this impending heat wave. Right now we're booking out between one and two weeks. By then, this heat wave may have passed. So what do you do in the meantime? Merzea says you can do plenty on your own, starting at the outdoor AC unit itself. He says make sure the coils are clean, make sure your um, drains are not clogged, make sure that uh, the system does not have anything impeding airflow. Then, Merzea says, head indoors. Make sure you have clean air filters, make sure all of your vents are open, make sure none of the return intake openings are blocked, and that the system just has somewhere to send that air that it's producing. Merzea says this sort of TLC is critical, but even then, the inside of your house may not feel like the inside of an igloo. 71 degrees. Merzea says air conditioning units designed for our climate are made to operate in temperatures of 85 to 95 degrees. In those 100 degree plus temperatures, um, you will notice that your system will likely not get to that 72, 68 number that you're probably used to having. So you'll just have to be a little bit more patient and understand that just they don't work that way. And understand that HVAC experts like Merzea are doing their very best at a very busy time. It's very tough, it's very stressful, demanding, but for us, it's our livelihood and it's our call to action to be there and step up and take care of our clients in their times of need. Of course, AC units are super important when temperatures get as high as we expect them to get in the coming days. But if you don't have air conditioning, Pacific Power says there are a number of things you can do to keep your house cool, starting with heat generating appliances like ovens and dishwashers. Use them only in the early morning hours or late evening hours. Also, close the blinds and drapes in south facing windows. Reporting in Southwest Portland, I'm Mike Benner for KGW News. And with air conditioners running over time, our Pat Doris checked in with both PGE and Pacific Power about the strain on the electrical grid. Big heat wave coming. Any concerns about having enough power? So heat waves are something that Pacific Power prepares for every year. It's, uh, it's not new to us. So uh, we're, we're ready for this. Um, but we aren't anticipating any power supply interruptions um, due to the heat. Pacific Power says if it runs low on electricity, it will buy or borrow from its corporate cousins in other states. Portland General Electric is the other big power company for our area. A spokesperson said they are also not worried about running out of power. The forecast is also causing some businesses and events to change plans for the weekend. You can read more about that and all of our heat wave coverage right now on KGW.com. There's an update tonight from Oregon's governor on COVID risk levels. This week will be the last time that counties are moved up or down to different risk categories. And that's because the state is so close to its 70% vaccination goal. Then those risk level restrictions will be dropped altogether. Here's where counties will stand starting on Friday. The big changes locally come in Polk County, where they have reached their vaccination goal and can now move to lower risk and Marion County is moving down to moderate risk. The state is now just 38,000 people away from meeting the vaccination goal. We're at 68.9% right now. We're trying to get to 70%, but the rate of new people getting shots has slowed down significantly, so it could take a couple more weeks to get there. Portland's latest shooting happened just before 8 o'clock tonight. It also involved this crash on Southeast 122nd Avenue at Burnside. One man is hurt and one person has been arrested. Last night on the story, we took an in-depth look at the causes and possible solutions to Portland's gun violence. But we're not alone in facing the problem. In fact, it's such a widespread issue, the president focused on it in an address to the nation today. Dan Haggerty has more on that and how Portland compares to the rest of the country. 
Well, Dina tweeted us saying, I'm hoping that your special coverage on Portland gun violence will include a comparison to other major cities. It would be good to see how much of this is part of a national trend and how much is local. So let's look at some of the numbers from police departments in more than 60 major cities. This shows the number of homicides in each city in 2020 compared to 2019. If the number is red, that means homicides increased. And you can see a lot of red on this chart. Now, not all homicides are shootings, of course, but this still gives you an idea of how the trend is going and how things are increasing. Now let's look at aggravated assaults in those same cities between 2019 and 2020. Again, you can see a lot of red numbers there, which means assaults went up in almost all of these cities. These aren't necessarily shootings either. We also checked out the data from the first part of this year and murders and assaults are up in the majority of those cities compared to the first part of last year. Now, if you need more evidence that gun violence is a nationwide problem right now, President Biden actually gave a speech on it Wednesday afternoon. He announced a major crackdown on guns used in violent crime by holding illegal gun dealers accountable. And he pledged more support for local law enforcement. He also called on Congress to pass gun violence legislation like background checks, an assault weapons ban, and the Violence Against Women Act. Biden also spoke about addressing the root causes of gun violence by increasing social programs in communities hit hardest by what he's calling a second public health crisis. Mr. President, what do you feel is the most effective thing that government can do to change the mindset of those who feel compelled to pull the triggers of these guns? By being engaged in a whole range of programs we talked today, everything from mental health programs to engaging people early on and letting them know there's other options making sure that when a child is young, they have access to real education, they get started off on the right foot, making sure that when someone gets out of prison, they're not denied public housing, they don't have to go back under the bridge where they're living before, that they're able to get help for health care, et cetera. And re-engaging them in the neighborhood, giving them some hope, some opportunity. And in the meantime, uh, making sure that those folks who are taking advantage of them by taking advantage of their 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 situation are in fact held accountable. We talked about a lot of these factors and possible solutions on our special understanding gun violence. If you missed it, you can watch the entire show on the KGW YouTube channel right now.